Hi guys, Kirk and Jay here with Kirk Giordano Plaster. And today we're going to show you we're going to do a scratch brown and a color finish. Um, the reason we're going to do a color finish is see this texture here. This is a commercial piece of property, and this texture is done with a 2030 La Habra base type of uh, cementitious finish. Now they're going to paint this. However, I'm pretty good, but I cannot get this consistency with any kind of Portland cement or hydraulic cement. And what we've got here is some fancy, fancy um, lathing. The detail here is two and a half inches thick right here. So the corner aid here has to match. Everything has got to align properly. Uh, fellows who did this were top of the line lathers. Never seen any better. All right, we did it. Anyway. We had a lot to, a big challenge, as they would say, to get this two and a half inches thick, make this come out two and a half inches thick, and make it where seven eighths our surround J trim or stunco stop match these corners. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna just show you. Now, I got some mud that we have got no retardants in, and we are going super thick here. So, what does that mean? That means it's going to have a tendency to want to fall because typical mud is not made to go that thick. I'll sh this is an easy part to my left. Let me show you the difficult part to my right here because that requires a lot of stucco. And that's why I say it's, it's difficult because it's so thick. Anyway, our job today is we are going to scratch and brown this. See where it got a big hole there? Here's what I would do because it doesn't want it here. And we have a, actually a bonding agent in there too. We put a lot in there and we get it to attach to the, to the actual sides of this stucco right here. We use it, when we were here to lath it, we took a water hose and we washed all the dirt and dust off of that. That way it will allow it to adhere. Uh, anyway, we are going to, Jay is going to put the camera down and we're going to completely scratch and brown this project. Say like right here too guys, we are two and a half inches with this corner to match this in order, because this dictates where we have to go. So we're, Jay and I are going to both apply this and after we apply it, we're going to float it all out. I'll show you what that means when we get to that stage. Then we're going to, since we're at a shopping center and there's a pizza place close by, we're going to go have some pizza, come back in about an hour. And this particular product here, you hose it down, you hydrate it, you mist it. So as it cures, because it's so thick, it won't cure too fast and that'll avoid some hairline cracking. But when we get to that stage, we'll show you because the material we are working with is setter. It's gonna set in 15 to 25 minutes, so we don't have time to film everything. Anyway, when we get to the stage where we're floating it, we'll show you, then we'll show you spreading it out with the La Habra finish in order to match that texture. All right, guys, we got the bulk of what we wanted on done. Notice uh, I'm making corners here. We fill it up here, pull it this way, fill it up here, pull it that way, and then I'm going to fill this up in a minute. We are two and a half inches thick here. We're using a product that you could actually go six inches thick, coat after coat after coat. No such thing as one fat coat with no product. Okay, because we're so thick here, now I'm going to try to hit this where it don't drop out on me. Okay, this is just called rotting. Rotting true and plumb. I'm using this Stucco stop right here. Hold on a second before you open that door. One second, buddy. We're, we're using the, the stucco stop. And you keep playing with it, it will all fall out. And it's here where I have a doorbell. We will push it down at first, then we'll pull it up, and then we'll just drop it downtown like that. Over here, same exact thing. We are getting our sides too, guys, like so. We're taking the other side exact same way. We take it, pull it up, get our sides. Chewing plumb. This guy here uh, might need a little bit more mud, but 
Here's the idea, guys. We take it and we go up. This is called rotting it, making it chew and plumb. Take it here. A lot of pressure now. If it starts to fall out, let it set a little bit. But that's what we got here. And then again, our corner, we just take it, boom, here. Right there. And now what we're gonna do is let this set. This piece here, I'm gonna hold this right here and I'm gonna fill this in because again, this is some really hot mud. I don't advise you guys to try doing this because it's not a one man job, but for the sake of showing off, I'll see what I can do with it. Okay, you take it, put your foot here, hold it, fish it in, fish it in, get your corner as best you can, pull some of that mud off the ground if you need it, fish it in, oh heck, one more, one more half full, and guys, you can drop it on the ground, it doesn't matter, because that's where I'm going to use it, take my square trowel, no flexibility in that. We take it, and we're going to pull it up to create this corner. Easy to do corners if you have a lot of experience with them. Although we had a flashing detail that was somewhat close, it wasn't perfect. Uh, and no fault of the manufacturer, it, just the, wall, the walls were out of plumb nothing we can't handle. See, that's we do that, pull it upward, and that's going to give us a, a true corner to work with. And then I'm going to do the same here, but anyhow, I thought I'd show one last piece before we come back and start floating this and do the finish coat over it. Okay guys, what I'm doing now is I'm floating out my joints, and somebody might say, hey Kirk, since you're floating it and bringing the aggregate or the sand out, can't you match that finish? I can come close, but I can't match it. When it's painted, it will sure show the difference of the aggregate. This sand that I'm using is, is Felton or plaster sand. It will show the difference, guys. And so what I do is we put this here and this particular product, we're about to go for lunch you're supposed to hydrate it, you just missed it, but I'm using a green sponge float with water, and the green sponge float with water actually mists it for me. The last thing, I, I got a big kick out of the contractor says, hey Kirk, will that tape remove some of the paint? And I thought, man, I'm no engineer. This red tape is designed to last 30 days without leaving a residue, does it? My ass. 10 days max in the sun it'll still leave a, a residue but depending on how long ago they painted this door and the quality of it I should be able to pull this I do have blue which I used here but guess what blue and water don't work the blue tape keeps coming off and it will continue to come off I uh, just kind of humored the fellow myself because blue tape will always come off so it's worse it's better to peel a little paint than to put the uh, blue tape and have it just come off and put the stucco on the surface. So what we're gonna do again is we're almost, I got about another hawk full to put on here. We're gonna go ahead and take lunch and when we come back, I'll show you how we apply this uh, 2030 finish to get the perfect texture match. All right guys, we're gonna put a conclusion on that. Notice. That's a color coat finish, and color coats come in Santa Barbara, which is like 30-30 sand, very, very fine. This is a 20-30 medium base, or 16-20, three separate bags, 194-pound bag. This particular material, you actually hydrate it, and water just kind of sheds right off. After you apply it, you just mist it down, or you could float it like we did, and then I hard rubber floated it, because if I use a sponge float, it brings out too much sand, and then it mixes with the sand I'm about to use. How do you know when it's finished? That's an hour ago. Hour ago, hard. This particular material, and in two to three hours, it reaches almost the same strength as Portland cement does in uh, like 30 day time. It's a very, very strong 
cement. Anyhow, what we do here, guys, is we apply the finish coat now. And don't worry about burying your joints, your expansions. Come back, come back, just for the sake of explanation here. Cover it up, cover, and you, where you got stuff like this, just cover it all up. Here, cover, as you can clean up with your float. I'm going to take it right down to here and show you what I'm talking about as far as the texture. Now me, uh, this is the way I would do it. There are some guys who, who can possibly match this texture if they spent a long time, like my buddy Fred Smith, uh, Danny Smith plastering. He is a master. He's a master at this stuff, but I kind of like to do it this way. It's faster, it's right on the money. Okay, you take yourself a sponge float. Brand new one, hey, what are the odds? All right, now all you want to do is match this finish here with the right, the right uh, sand, piece of cake. You just take it right to the door here, cut it down, splatter it here where this doorbell is, just disregard it. Disregard the doorbell and let's see, lift it up at first, go down, then cover it back up. The bell is going to cover a whole half inch. Then when you get to the part right here, fill it up. What I'll generally do is I'll fill it up because it doesn't matter. You could take your trowel, I mean, whether or not you're using a square trowel, round trowel, margin, pointer. You just do like this and cover your edges too, guys. All right, now you take a, your, your trowel, you use the heel of it, and cut that back out. Piece of cake. Anyway, uh, we're gonna finish up here. Thought I'd point out this particular material and how you can do three coats in a day if you know what you're doing. If you don't, don't even buy this material and try to do this. It's taken me years to learn how to do all this stuff. Anyway, my name is Kirk, Jason on the camera. As usual, we thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. Once again, folks, we thank you for watching, and I really enjoy all your comments. If you guys like this video, please click the like button down below, and also, if you enjoy what we do, subscribe to our channel so we can keep making these videos for you. My name is Kirk. And Jay. We thank you for watching, and from the entire Giordano family, we'll, we'll see you on the next one.